Hello my lovely students and today we're asking what is supplication or why do they put their hands on each other when they want something in ancient epic? First of all, supplication is ritual begging. You're desperately requesting something using a very specific formula that everyone will recognise. Unlike Xenia, it is not apparently protected by Zeus. The result depends on the personal circumstances of the person being begged from, meaning they don't have to say yes unless they want to. And you'll find it's mortals begging mortals and gods begging gods. And there isn't really a combination of the two, because if you're a mortal and you want to beg a god, you're going to pray. To actually supplicate someone, or be suppliant, or be a supplicant, you must use beseeching words. You basically make a pleading speech, better than this little one here. And you also use the ritual gestures. You kneel before the host. This shows you are degrading yourself by being physically lower. And you also grab their knees. This suggests your abject desperation, but also stops them getting away. So you can see it's pretty hard for them to deny you what you're asking for if you've got them in this position. Hot tip. Sometimes other gestures are added, as in these important examples in Homer's epics. In the Iliad, book 24, we have Achilles, best warrior of the Achaeans, being supplicated by Priam, king of Troy and the enemy. After his normal ritual gestures, Priam kisses the hands of Achilles and adds to his speech, I have kissed the hands of the man who killed my sons. He has actually snuck into the Greek camp in order to get the body of his best son Hector back from Achilles who killed him on the battlefield and then because he's really 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 angry that Hector killed his best friend and lover Patroclus has been dragging the body round the walls of Troy and even the gods are getting upset by that ridiculous mutilation. The fact that Priam puts himself in this horrific, pathetic position actually makes Achilles break down and give in to his demands. And in fact, they both sit there crying together. Oh. In the Iliad in Book 1, we actually have Zeus, king of the gods, being supplicated by Thetis, the Nereid, and mother of that same Achilles, because she wants Zeus to give her a favour, and that favour is let all the Greeks die until Achilles is brought back into battle with a fanfare, just to prove how awesome he is. He's not getting what he needs, but I'm not going to go into that now because that is a long story. The story goes as such, Thetis sank in front of Zeus, clasped his knees with her left hand, so far so good, but also raised her right hand to his chin and so made her petition. She literally grabs him by the face. He definitely can't get away if she's doing that and it's a much more intimate gesture. But not only that, Zeus made no reply. He knows she's going to get him into trouble. But Thetis, still clasping his knees, pleaded with him again. She doesn't let go. So grabbing his face and then not letting go until she gets the answer she wants certainly is more forceful and also a lot more intimate. She does know Zeus fancies her and she also knows Zeus's wife is nearby. He's going to want to get out of this fix pretty quickly. In the Odyssey, book seven, here's our friendly neighbourhood cunning trickster Odysseus, the hero you love to hate, having just supplicated Arete, queen of the Phaeacians. There's been this whole thing where he's made this amazing entrance because Athene shrouded him in a mist and he just literally went, popped up in front of all of them and surprised them. Then he grabs Arete's knees, makes his pleading case, and then, having spoken, Odysseus sat down in the hearth's ashes close to the fire. He purposely sits in the ashes, getting himself filthy. It's not a place you would put your guest. And he's hoping someone will raise him from the fire, raise him from the floor, which is what you do once someone has successfully supplicated you. But for now, he's showing how absolutely desperate he is to degrade himself in that way. That said, this is Odysseus. He knows that this is going to pluck at their heartstrings. He is desperate, but he's also cunning. He knows what to do to get what he wants. 
Earlier in book six, we also had Odysseus, cunning trickster, hero you love to hate, but also naked, supplicating Nausicaa, princess of the Phaeacians. Being naked, he doesn't run up to her and grab her knees, but at the beginning of his beseeching speech, he says, I am at your knees, metaphorically. Please imagine that I am grabbing you right now, because if I did grab you right now, you'd probably run away screaming like the rest of your women have just done. Again, cunning trickster, but here, very cunning not to get in that princess's personal space and ruin his chances of getting what he needs. So to recap, to supplicate someone or be suppliant to them or be a supplicant, you must use beseeching words and ritual gestures. These basic ones will suffice, but depending on how desperate you are or how absolutely you need what you're asking for, take a little clue from those other epic, epic supplications and add a little something. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you like and subscribe to get more juicy classics content. Have a great day.